Hey everyone, this is Jillian Graham, and this tutorial is going to focus on how to post assignments in Google Classroom, including your lovely virtual classroom creations. Okay, so here we are in Google Classroom. This is just a demo class that I created for this video and for other videos so that um, I don't have to worry about blurring out this class code. Um, but there is really only one place that you're going to post assignments, and that's under the Classwork tab. I do want to show you first, though, that in the stream um, tab, you can post things here, but I would specifically use this stream only for announcements. I actually set my settings, um, and I don't know if I've done it for this one, but you can set your settings so that classwork notifications don't show on the stream. And yeah, see, I've actually done that. So classwork on the stream. I would hide the notifications because otherwise, every time you post an assignment, um, in the classwork tab, it will also post on the stream to announce it to students. And that's really not necessary. You should be training your students to go to the classwork tab to see those assignments. That way you keep your stream clutter free. So that way the focus is just on announcements. So definitely hide those notifications for the classwork um, on the stream. So if you had an announcement that you wanted to make, so for instance, this was a, an announcement I just made for Google Meet sessions. So to do that, I just posted, I'll just edit this one. So I just posted it for all students. If you have students in your class, you can select who you want to post it to. Sometimes I use that if only a few students need the announcement. Um, I just posted what it was going to be, and then I attached, so I added this um, either from my drive or as a link. You can do either one. You can also add a file from your computer, or you can just add a YouTube video. If you have a, a welcome video that you posted on YouTube, you can link straight to that here. Now, there is no way to have it big. I know a lot of people ask about they want this to display like it's embedded, and you can't do that. In Google Classroom, um, if you click on this question mark down here in the corner, you can request that feature, but currently um, you can only attach these. But once they click on it, it opens and they can see the announcement. Okay, so that's for the stream. Keep that to announcements. It keeps it nice and organized and not confusing, and the stream is not a mile long. All right, so to post assignments, under the classwork tab you click on this plus button this is the create button and there are different types of um, things that you can create so you can create an assignment which is probably what you're going to use the most that's where you want to, um, uh, an assignment that you want to have graded although you don't have to have it graded um, that's just something that you want students to turn in regardless of whether it's graded or not quiz assignment all this is going to do is create a Google form for you that is attached to it. It's really not necessary. I create my own forms separately in my drive. I don't need Google Classroom to create one for me. So I just use an assignment and I um, attach my Google form there. And I can still turn on import grading and have um, that grading function that you get with quiz assignment as well through assignment. A question is just like a quick little check. Um, it can also be graded that you can post for your students. Then you've got material. That's something that you're going to post that you don't need them to turn in. So that's what I use for my agenda slides because it's just they're just going to view it and they're going to access all the material that I have linked, but they don't need to turn it in. So I use material a lot. Reuse post, that's for if you want to reuse a post that you've used in an archived class or in another class. So you might post it in one class and you maybe you forgot to post it to another class. You can go back and reuse that post. And then topics, of course, is how you can organize your classwork tab. You just create topics. So you hear, see here, I have topics. This is what I did in the spring. We were doing two week um, sessions when we jumped right into e-learning so I found it really helpful to just have one single day as a topic some people use weeks weeks are helpful too um, but under here I just posted that material and then I posted the assignment with the um, 
pages that they needed attached. All right. So I'm just going to go over the two biggest ones. So creating an assignment, this is for something that you want students to turn in. So you're going to use this if um, you want to have students attach something. So I use this a lot for homework. So let's say it was homework number 16. This is just how I number things. And it was page whatever. OK. So I would put the title there. And this correlates with the grade book that we use. I put it in the same way. And then I would add from my Google Drive the file that they need to complete their homework. So they have their textbook, but they can also, I'm just going to attach this one here since it popped up. So I'm going to insert that. I double clicked on it, or you can hit insert the insert button. Um, now this is just a PDF, so this isn't going to matter. But if it was not a PDF, you do have the options to, um, you know, students can view the file, students can edit the file, or you can make a copy for each student. This is just a PDF, so obviously they don't need a copy. And I really I don't have to worry about this because it's a PDF. They're not going to be able to edit it regardless. So for PDFs, you can just post it. You can just leave it just like that. You can set a due date for it. Let's say it's due tomorrow because usually it's due the next day. You can even set a time for it. I'll just say it's due at midnight. Then you can put it under a topic. So if it was due or I put the day I assign it. So if this was Monday, I was assigning this. And it's going to be due Tuesday then. Okay. So I would just set that up. You can set your points. So whatever you want, you can have it ungraded, um, which I don't recommend because then it won't show as missing. So I would just leave it, even if you do it out of one um, for completion, I would still set it to something so that it um, can be marked as missing in the gradebook when they don't turn it in after the due date. You can also choose, again, I don't have any students in this class, so I can't show you that, but you can choose to, to who you need, whom you need to assign it to. Um, so you could pick specific students if you needed to assign different um, problems to differentiate this homework. You could do that instead. And then you just click Assign. Now you can also schedule it. I do that a lot. So let's say I wanted to schedule this for um, if it was due this morning. Let's just say I'm going to post it at 2 p.m. because that's the class. And there we go, it's scheduled. And instead of scheduling, you can also create a draft if you need to just come back to it. And you're not sure when you want to schedule it for yet. Okay. Now, I'm going to show you another, um, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to create another assignment. All right, so this one's not going to be a PDF. So let's say I want to, let's say it's a drag and drop activity. So for drag and drop, drop activities, they need access to the file. So you want to make a copy for each student. So for instance, here's a drag and drop activity I have. I'm going to then select make a copy for each student. Now if you go in, if you, if you assigned something and you were going to go back and try to make a copy for each student, you can't do that. It has to be a fresh assignment. You just start from scratch. That's the only time that this is available. So then you make a copy for each student choose who you want to send it to, how many points, the due date, and then you can put it under a certain topic. Let's just not put a topic on this one so you can see that. And then again, I can either assign it, schedule it, or save the draft. So because I didn't put a topic on it, you can see that one ended up up here. Now let's say I just forgot to put a topic on it. I do that all the time. You simply just pick it up and drag it and put it wherever you want. So then when they go to open this assignment, this is going to look different on the student's end, but when they go to view the assignment, um, it's going to show their screen. It's going to show uh, your work. They can click on it to open it, and it will open their copy of the assignment. And this is a drag and drop activity, so what they're going to be able to do is actually manipulate the pieces 
but it's their copy and then they will have um, a turn in button or I mean it's just going to save it so really they can just complete it close it out and then go back to here and turn it in so that's what you want to use if you want them to have a copy of it so that they can either drag and drop different parts or if they're filling in answers in text boxes or if they have to interact with it some way and you, you don't want them to interact with your copy because that would be changing the file for everyone. Now, if you did want everyone to be editing the same file, you can do that. So let's say, um, I don't know if it was some kind of like FAQ thing or, um, I don't know, you can create a document, okay? You can go in and you can say, um, you know, answer or ask questions here, and then you can go in and answer the questions so that everyone can see those questions. Um, but the point is that you want everyone to be on the same file, collaborating on the same file. So if you want that to happen, you're going to click Students Can Edit File, and everybody will be on the same file. So I would definitely put in the file you know, don't delete other people's work or answers. Um, this is a collaborative file. You're definitely going to have to prep your students if you're going to use that type of assignment. All right, and then the other thing that I wanted to show you is that when you create an assignment, let's say this one is your virtual classroom. Um, I'm just going to use my syllabus as an example. And I wouldn't do this as an assignment. But again, just as an example. All right, so let's say you're attaching Google Slides, okay? So any virtual classroom or really any Google Slides or any, like a, a Google Doc or um, a Google Sheet. Um, and let's say you want to assign it to them and you want them to turn it in for some reason, um, maybe just as a check to say that they viewed it, they read it, um, just as like a completion grade. So the thing with this is, this is not a PDF like my first example, right? So um, we do want to make sure that we set this to students can view. They don't really each need a copy. That's unnecessary because they just need to all view the same file and they don't need to interact with it because it's not drag and drop or typing in text boxes or anything. So you want to set it to students can view, right? Now, here is the uh, disclaimer. If my file in my Google Drive is set to can edit, like anyone with the link can edit, and it's not set to private, it's not set to can view, then this isn't going to matter because my drive settings are going to override this, okay? So you want to make sure that you um, anything that you're posting in Google Classroom, you would never set your files to can edit anyway to share with people. You would, I mean, I never do. Um, so just make sure that they are still restricted, they're still private, or that they are set to can view. Because sometimes you might share the link somewhere else, so you set it to can view and you share the link. So as long as it's set to can view, this will be true. <laughs> so this is going to, your settings in Drive is going to uh, supersede whatever you set this to. Um, so just as a warning, okay? But then when you post this, students will only be able to view the file um, and they'll open it up and it'll say can view instead. So for instance, let's say I was in another account. They would only be able to view it and they can click on the links, they can navigate to things, um, but they can't um, edit your file, okay? So that's just something important about this, students can view, because it's technically not going to be just can view if your drive settings, so in here, your share settings still need to be restricted or set to can view in order for that to work. All right, then um, let's create an assignment 
where we add a form. So I can show you how quiz assignment is really not necessary. So let's say I add a form. Um, So you notice how this pops up. I added a form to this assignment. It is not a quiz assignment, but my quiz is set. My form, let me open that up. My form is set to a quiz. So I went in, I made this form, I went into my settings, went to quizzes, make this a quiz. So Google Classroom noticed that it was a quiz and it automatically turned on grade importing for me. This is exactly what happens when you create a quiz assignment. Um, so this is this is all you have to do to create a quiz assignment. Okay. And then after they take the quiz, you'll have your results. Your results will be here. And then what you can do is um, release the scores. You'll click on release scores, and then you'll be able to import the grading from the gradebook in Google Classroom. All right, and then the last type, well, you can create a question, um, but that's not really adding an assignment. Um, so this is just to create questions. You can create short answer questions, multiple choice questions. You can choose whether they reply to each other or if they can edit their answer. And the last one is material. So I use this a lot for my agenda slides. So I'll just say agenda for Monday, whatever date. And then I'll attach my agenda. And I'm going to have to just scroll through. So let me show you the one that I would have attached. When you do a material, it's not going to... Um, here's one right here. When you set up material, you don't have to have it. It's not going to have grading or anything. It's not going to have a due date. They're not going to have to turn it in. All I do is pull it up to access it. They can see, okay, what do I need to do today? They can click on this to check their answers. Then they click on this to watch the video. And then they can click on this to get to their, um, the textbook pages that they need to complete their homework for the day. So it's just material. It's reference material. So that's where you would, um, that's what you would use to post anything like that where you don't want them to turn it in. Okay. Um, I think I've covered everything. Again, reusing a post is just to reuse a post from Let's say you had an archived class, and you're like, oh, I did that project, I had it all set up, I want to go back and use that again, let me go back and reuse that post. You can do that from here, from reuse post. And then, of course, topic is just to create a topic. Okay. All right, well, I hope that helps clear up um, the confusion between assignment and material. We get a lot of questions in our Bitmoji Craze for Educators group specifically in relation to posting assignments in Google Classroom. So I hope that helps. Thanks, guys. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments.